Welcome back, everyone, and sorry about the break. I'm sure our minds are refreshed for the next one hour and what we'll be doing next. Before we went on the break, we're trying to load in our sliding door, which we did already. Okay, so you can either have width and height or normal width or normal height. So you can either have any of them. We have to duplicate here. Once you duplicate, the size will now be 1,200 millimeter by um, 2,100 millimeter also. Okay. Now, once we've done that, you edit width, height at 21, then width at 21. So, I want to write it. So add the width and the height now. They click OK. That's for the sliding door. Now let's click OK and come back to our model here. Mm -hmm. Ignore this. But now add the sliding for the kitchen to be on this side. And another sliding for the sitting room, so the lobby. So we have a simple design here. There's no terrace here, yeah. So we have the um, kitchen area, the lobby area, the first room, second room, and sitting room, very simple, right? Now move to the next stage, which is our windows. You see we've dealt with walls, we've dealt with doors, and let's do windows now. With window here, you can just click on window. Once you click on window, we have the default windows here from Autodex, so we have the normal um, window opening. I have the casement window and the double angle window. But if you don't want to use any of this here, you can come to load family. Same way with this portal. Then just get back up a bit. Then you look for windows. But for um the models that we're making available, once you download them to your download folder or wherever you save them in, let's say for example you save them in documents. I just click on documents and you'll see it there because mine is saved in my library here and this is why i can see them here but if you save yours in your documents and just click on documents and you'll see that okay so i just want to clear that part so in case you don't when you're working and these models are sent to you you won't be expecting to look for some things where you're not supposed to look for them so if you save them in documents they'll be in documents if you save in desktop they'll be in desktop can you see that okay now for Windows, you will click Windows, double click. Then our Windows, the various Windows will be loaded up. Now in case when you load your um, components or elements like this family, and you can't see a preview, all you have to do is come to Views, then change this to Thumbnail. Once this is a Thumbnail, you'll be able to see a preview like this, okay? Now let's check for the window we would want to make use of. So um, let's see, aluminum window, which is this aluminum window exterior, and OK. See, it's loading from 2009 down to 2023. OK, then we have to edit type. The window we need, the first will be 1, 2 by 1, 5. Just duplicate. One two hundred mm by one five hundred mm. That's to, uh, for its creatures. Then the height would be one five hundred. One five hundred. While the width would be one two hundred. Okay. So that is for this year. Then, okay. Can I add uh, window star designs? We can have um, one window here and another one here. So just place them as easy as that. You can always have various sizes of windows. This is just for practice. You can have for your kitchen also. Then your sitting room area, I have one here. 
one year and no one year. Yeah, we don't have an entrance door yet, which will be fixed very soon. Okay. But this sign is for sliding door. We don't have the main entrance door. For the main entrance door, which is the exterior door, we're using the 900 by um, 21. But this time around, it will be an exterior door, not interior door. So just come to doors here. And select the 900 by 2100 mm. Then we'll come to edit type. Now you can't just change. This is something I want all of us to take note of. You can't just come into any of these elements or these families and just make direct changes. For example, if these elements or models have been used in your project before and, and just make direct changes, it changes everything entirely. That is why I duplicate first before I make adjustments. I don't just make adjustments like that. If I want to make any adjustments, you have to duplicate what is existing. Don't just adjust what is there initially. Do you understand? You have to duplicate it. So for this now, we duplicate this. I can just type in exterior EXT as exterior. We'll just change the function of this to exterior. Okay. Then you can now pick this and add this here. This is your floor. And we have a simple floor plan view. If we were to do this by and you know the number of times as it would have taken us to do something like this. But with this, it is very easy. I've added our um elements, the doors, the windows. Now we've not added toilet windows here. So you can just click on this. Another method for you to do this is so you just click on this, right click, then click create similar, or you just come to architecture here. I click Windows, any of that, whichever works for you. Now, you want to edit type here. We need a 600. So in here, we made a mistake with the name. It is 150 mm instead of 1,500 mm. So what we just do is rename. We are renaming this. Okay. But we need a 600 by 750 window. As well, duplicates. Then we change the name. So 600 by 750 millimeter window, okay? The height will become 750, the width becomes 600. Once you've done that, apply and okay. Yeah. Okay. Then we can apply this here. Oh, we have a problem. You see, we can't see this in our plan, which is very normal, especially for um toilet windows like this. Okay. So if you have this kind of situation, all you can do in this sense is you come to your view templates under views. Come to view templates and view range rather. So now you have view range. That's VR, or you check it under properties of this page. The default page properties here under extent, you see view range. Just edit or shortcuts VR. Once you set this, pick your cut plane. Let's set your cut plane to 2000. If your cut plane, that's this part here. Now, this is it. Let me show you what this is about. Now, you see, we have various cuts here. Hmm. Now, the midpoint, that's the cut plane, which is this two section. It is where you are cutting your design form, that you're viewing your plan view form. So, if your element is below or above this cut plane, it won't see it. If it's above the cut plane. So, you have to adjust your cut plane to be within that element. So, you'll be able to see it on your floor plan. And that's your view depth. Okay, so this our cut plane is 2000. So we'll be able to see the window we created. Okay. Let me see, I have this here. Still not coming up. Let me change the type. So um, this casement here. Okay. 
or we use the normal window opening. Let's use the normal window opening. Yeah. This our cost between is two i. There's a window here, but you can see. So we change our. We adjust the view range again. Let's bring it down to one eight hundred. Apply. Okay. Still no shrink. So you just have to tweak. Keep tweaking this till you have a view. Now, if you don't have that, all you can do is come to your elevation here. Let's come now to one of our elevation that has that view. Uh, let's check this out. Where's the east? Okay, this is it here. You see, it's very low. That is why it's not coming up at all. Let me change this to the first one we had initially. Check this. You see, this is just coming out as a plain box. Okay. And I want to check the level where this is at. You come to your annotates, align this. So it just sees at this point here. That is why you can't see it. So we have to adjust this. This is at 900, this base level. We need it to be at this height level, not the base level. You just click on this. Then you change the steel height. And head height, rather, change the head height. Seal height is the base, head is the top. So you change the head height to 2100. Then apply. Let's click apply here, adjust this. Yeah. Now you see these windows here, that means these windows are not at 2100, you see. The heads are at 2400, if you don't want it to be that. What you do for that also is you click this, right click, select all instance in entire project. Can you see that? Once you select all of that, you now change the head height to 2100. Then apply. Now we have everything at the same level here. Now we come up to our ground floor level. This is how it looks like on the plan. You can now change this to the second type of windows. Because we might have issues with seeing the first one, which is normal opening. Yes, yeah, 600 by 600. Can you see that now? Okay, it's very small, but let me change this. Now you can increase, if you have a situation like so you want to just increase the thickness of your line, under your quick access toolbar, most of us will have this up here. Mine is down here. You see, you come down to thin lines here. Just double it up. Can you see how your design look like now? Okay, so that's your window. Yeah. Okay, I had an extra window to this kitchen. Click this. Just type CS. That's create similar. So you create that kind of window also here. Yeah. Can you see? So we have your windows, the doors, and all of that for your building already. And after you've added windows and doors, your building is coming to shape already. You've seen the different views on elevation. Now let's come down to oh, um ceiling. And let's quickly add the ceiling. Just click ceiling. Ceiling is very easy. The ceiling level can make it to six or two thousand seven hundred, depending on your head to um the roof. Level one, one of that. Let's we'll click on thousand seven hundred here. Now under this ceiling properties here, I prefer to make use of the six hundred by six hundred grid. You can use plain, I use six hundred by six hundred grid kind of ceiling. Click this. You can use six hundred by one two grid. Okay. So if you want to use any other type, just come to edit type. Then you can always duplicate this and make adjustments. Okay. But for this, I'm using 600 by 12. I'll just click, click. Now it's giving me an information that the views are not visible here. Yes, because we are not on the ceiling plan. That is why we can't see it. Okay, so just click. I want to make sure you click on the entire surface area. I just came to ground floor. So on that ceiling plan, you saw your ceilings. Can you see them now? Now this window, it is still above. See the air height is still not where it's supposed to just change the air height for this to 2100. So I don't want to see it on this view anymore. So this is your ceiling plan. 
see your ceilings, then the internal wall, the external wall. That's how you go about creating your ceiling. Now let's come back to the ground floor level. Yeah. Now we have floors. You just have to add our floors. So you click on floor. The generic floor at 150, that's the oversight or something. This is 150 mm. You just click on this square. You can pick from this point down to the external floor. Now you can now create a little bit of terrace around here. So based on the floor, see it's still on this square here until just something a little bit complex at this stage. Now you see from this square here, from here, I'll try and make this around 1,200 by 1,500, 1,800, okay. Yes, it gave you a message here. Now it's telling you now that the highlighted lines overlap. Lines may not form a closed loop. And if you do, your lines are not closed, you're, it will give you error message, you'll be able to proceed. So we are going to do something a little bit technical. So you have to pay attention here. Now, what you do is, you see on this um, school rectangle we created here, you click on this first, the top part here, and you delete that off. So we have this line, and we have this box here. But we have to make sure this is a closed loop. That means it has to come like this, not just go like this. Yeah. Now under this modify, on the modify type, under this modify ribbon here, there's an item called splits. Can you see splits? Yeah. All you just do is click on the splits, then click here. Okay. Then you check for the item called trim or extend. Trim or extend. Let's click on this here. We pick the first one and the next one. Can you see that? The first one and the next one. And we have this here. That is the boundary for your flow. Once you're done, just click on modify. That's like escape. So you see the boundary for your flow, your flow covers. Okay, that's your flow boundary. And click on okay. We have our floor area here. Can you see that? It usually is adding up and it's taking shape, right? Now, once you've added your floor here, we have to add our railings around here. Okay, we've worked with build tools already. Transporting system is for multi story building, complex building, and all of that, which we are not looking at as this is not a major design program. We are looking at railing. Now, all you just do is click on this railing here. Then we will just pick. All railing also has to be a closed loop, remember? So the chain has to be turned on. Offset from this wall has to be like, let's say, 25 millimeter. Okay. And we don't need the radius. Okay. Chain on this here. The level is at the ground floor level. Leave all of this as it is. I'll pick from here. Can you see it has an offset already? This is not on the line. Let me turn the thin lines back on. So we have to see what is going on here. If I click on this now. Can you see it's not on the line? I'm walking towards the line, but it's not on the line. Then I'll continue from here down to here. Can you see it's having an offset then to here? So I have my railing that went round. Once I'm done, I modify or you escape. Now this is our railing boundary here. Now with this railing boundary here, just click on OK. Then we have this here. So this is the railing itself here. And I can just use the default railing, which would still come back to very soon. Now we have a complete design. Now let's cut our section. Okay. Now you see under this quick access, you see this section here. When you come down to views, under views, you see section. So I'll cut my first section, which is from here down to this point. And I'll cut my next section also. That's under view section. That's from here down to this point. Those are my two sections that we're cutting. Okay. 
So I can now click on this here. You see, there's a small tiny um, gap here. Let me show you. Can you see this here? This is very small, tiny gap. All you just do is click on that. You see, it breaks this off. And now I just to make sure your section line does not cross. It's not affect the section view. Just to make sure your design looks neat. This also, same thing happens. Can you see that small gap here? Just click there. You can always adjust your view depth also to come down within the model. Then it's also within the model. Okay. Once you've done that, yeah, let's add the roof. Okay. I'll come back to our roof level. Yeah. Can you see the roof level? Come back to architecture. Then under this build, we see the roof here. Click on roof. Once click on roof, we have the 400 mm by default. So you can change the properties. Let's use the 125 mm. Can you see you have concrete roof, warm roof concrete, warm roof timber, 100 mm thick. So you have various type here. For, I, 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 for this session, I'll be making use of the 125 mm generic. Click this. Then base level is the roof level. Make sure this is roof level. We could leave everything as it is here, define slope on. Now over hang, which is our offset, which is 600. Okay, and just pick the walls. Now the boundary line, remember boundary lines that we use for floor, we used for railings. So this boundary line here, make sure this is set as peak walls. It is not lines we are working with this time around, but peak walls. So as you over your mouse around the walls, it gives this offset already of 600. Can you see that? And this, we see at this point here, this is not a wall, so it is not doing anything, right? I will do here, you can either leave this like this, or you use the peak lines, down the line to here, then you set your offset now, it's around to 600. And also you set your offset to 600 here, and now pick from here. You see this side, you just press this. So yeah, it goes like this, this goes like this, and this goes like this. Once you have this here, now come back to split. Remember we did four floor, split this, then trim and extend. Trim from here to here, from here to here. Okay. Now the slope of our roof is 30 degree slope. Okay. Just click okay. And make bring what happens. Cancel. Let's see what happens here. Um, I can't make it perfect. Sorry. Okay. Mm, let me make this plain. But I think these lines are too short. Okay, this part it is too short to make a footprint. Yeah. I can just adjust this here. Just cover up. Let's see. Okay. I told you that place was too short. So we have a very short, it will make the that is adjusted and we have something to work with here. Hmm? And that's your roof view, your roof design. So you can come back to sites and see your detailed roof plan. I'm sure many of us are familiar with a view like this. Right? Now we have all of this. Now let's check our sections here. Just double click. Unlike AutoCAD, you have to start drawing lines. But some people will always come and they want to learn AutoCAD, they want to learn AutoCAD. This is way better than AutoCAD, way better than CAD. Now you can now pick this here, Let's do the same thing. I pick this here, move up, move this down, and adjust this out of the view. This is a simple presentation. Okay, so you have your section of your building, section one. Then section two also. Okay, it's very important you practice everything we've done so far. And that is an assignment. It is not just about you learning this, but practicing it. Okay, so this is just a basic, simple view. Now let's look at it. We've been seeing 2D all day, we've seen the 2D ground floor plan. 
the 2D roof level, the 2D site plan, the 2D elevations, your east elevation. Can you see how your building looks like? The east elevation, the north elevation, south, west. See a simple design here. Now, for you to get your charity, come back to views up here and click on charity view. And voila, see you have your thing, cool build and design. Can you see? Now, for you to like rotate around the screen like this, you press the shift key, then the middle mouse button, that's the mouse scroll wheel, then you're able to rotate around your screen. Can you see your building here? Hmm? It's the really interesting and all of that. Now, let's quickly add a little bit of environment. Come to site plan here. Yeah. Now come to site, massing and site, topo surface. Okay, topo surface. Then place points. Now add my point, add the first point here. Then the next point, and the next one, and the next one. Yes. Based on the site. Okay. Now I also have this here. I'll click OK. So that's the first surface. Now to add one more thing, which is my building pad. Just going to go on to level, come down to building pad here. Then I like use the rectangle boundary line rectangle. Kick from this end here down to outside the railing. Other than I do in part, okay. That's my building part. I can see it here, but I come up to my site view. I see this kind of building part here. And let's come back to our 3D view, view and 3D. And you have this kind of view here now, or you have the building is not just floating anymore, it's on the ground surface, right? Now, for us to view this very well. You come back to um, detail level, make this fine. Okay. Then the visibility, let's change this to shaded. Can you see you have your soil? This. So you have your simple 3 d view of your building. See, I'm trying to peep through the window to see what is inside our building. Can you see inside? Don't worry. Then you get to Navisworks, you'll be able to. Enter the building yourself. But it's just like how the building looks like from Revit. And this is the 3D view your exterior walls, the door, and all of that. It is how to go about a simple 3D design. This is like the basic of what you need to know. With this, you can always try and explore further. Okay, so this is the foundation of designing. You have the part view. They can just change this view. You can hide the sun. Now, down here, we have some other properties here. Let me quickly give a run through. Now, sun parts, if I just turn this on, I can see the sun. Now, it's telling me to set my project location. It needs a current location because I'm connected to the internet now. I can set a location for my sun. Now, use the specified current location. So it's using based on my current location. And this is the time, 12 plus three. This is where the sun is now. Okay, so that is the sun part. Then shadows on. This is where the shadow is on my building. Okay, for sun study, maybe you want to do analysis or where to place some panels or all of that. You want to know where the sun will be at various points in time. So you want to place maybe a solar panel on your roof, you're able to know the best position to place your panels. A part where a part that will receive 24 hours of sunlight. Do you understand? All of that study can be done. Or wrap it here based on different times. So you can always adjust this is your sun here. Let's play God here. And let's adjust the sun a bit. You see the shadow is changing. Then the more you, this is the sun that you're trying to adjust. This is 10 a.m. Can you see at the morning, the a.m. Then let's try evening. Let's bring this back to the evening. 
Okay, you can now change the resolution also. That's the date, see that different dates here. So on this day, how would the sun look like? So that's why solar engineers or um, some specific engineers are able to do a all year sun analysis, sustainability analysis and all of that because the software has incorporated all of that into it. So you see, January, February, um, sunlight was really low at this period. And we had the kind of cold weather. So we try and move back to February, March. That's what we have by August or July 28. Where is the sun at? See, the sun is more intense in July than it was in February. You see, so it's like a sun study. So you can just turn this off. See, so last study, we do a study of the sun part. Up here, we have. I mean, Okay, so you can set how the sun would look like and just play it. Okay, so that's for solar so different um, scenarios here. No, we are not diving that in depth into that. I just want to show us some of the things that is possible. Okay. So let me turn this off. No, I'm not saving it. So it won't take a bit of time. Okay. So I have my shadows there. I can do a quick render. I preview on log 3D. I can save this orientation, this view here. If I like this view, I don't then want to make adjustments to it. Just see this. Then lock it in place. I just lock. So this is this here. Let me see view one. Okay. So this is locked. Yeah. So I go back to my trading view. I have this view one. So I see if I change, I won't be able to. I can say I can't rotate it anymore. I can only zoom in or zoom out, but I can't rotate anymore because it is locked. So I can unlock this also by coming. Down here, unlock view. Now I can rotate. Can you see that? Then, if you have elements that are hidden, let's say for this example, my really let's come down to the ground floor plan, for example. Then I want to hide this section line, right click. Now, all of this, right click here, then hide in view elements. And I want to see, but after I'm done, I need to see that back. I'll just come to down to reveal hidden elements, which is down here. This bulb icon, and you see there's a bulb icon down here. This year, let's just click on that, and you see everything that is hidden. Click, right click, then on height and view. That is on that. Also, click, okay, we've not clicked it yet. This is click, right click. It's not showing us that. I'm sorry. Okay. okay, we just clicked it. Once you click it now on add elements and it's no longer in the then close this one. So you see it's back here. So that's how you hide or on hide elements. Okay, so that is all about a simple CVD design with Autodex Revit. Now you as a person, you have to now go back, then reproduce something like this for you. So by time we'll get to the advanced sections, um, the model, you have to have submitted this one. The 3D model would be an information rich 3D model, which is what for a two story building, that is what we'll be using for our 4D stroke 5D aspects of this program. Okay, so. Um, try as much as possible to practice what you've done, learn today, think out of the box, try as many things as possible, and you would get that before it meets for the 5D aspects using Autodex Revit. Thank you very much. So, any question for today's session? Wow, thank you so much, uh, QS, uh, Kasim.
welcome sir and uh, i also have to appreciate our audience for being attentive and patient all this while it's not as many of them that were online before we went for break that came back but we'll still have a very good reasonable number of them we appreciate your patience um sir uh mine is not a question it's just a point a direction that would uh, benefit us more because uh looking at what you have done so far and in connection with the whole idea and that is bringing us to this very uh application which is bim <clears throat> could you just show us one or few things that uh, because i know on my side for me i understand all these things that we have been doing is the process of uh compiling informations those rich informations that are contained in bim that is what you have been doing but could you just uh explain to us some of the informations too that have become part of this uh this model that you have things like maybe wall thickness things like uh maybe fire rating those basic informations that will will always be required in a beam material makeup finishes and the rest of them if you can add more uh, information on that direction if you can give points more explanations on that direction before we go to the q and a which some people have already uh, submitted for you thank you okay thank you mr Mojito. um for all of this that we've done so far that looks like it's not much we've built a lot of information now let's take for example the walls now you see this wall here this is just the name basic wall then mastery okay now we come back to edit type here it gives us another dialog box that shows us all that information about this wall now you see this wall it's a stru the structure of this wall let's click on edit type the thickness is the 25 mm wall and this is the material that was used concrete mastery unit that's cmu now that the family it's a basic wall the type is 25 wall total thickness is a 225 now the fire re the resistance as fire resistance is 0 0.1731 meter square per kilonewton watt then the thermal mass that is the weight 340.27 kilojoules all of these are important information that would guide either the fire safety engineer, the other HSC engineer, or the electrical engineer, or the fire service engineer to design a fire protection system for this building based on all of these calculations here. Now let's come down here. We see our structural material, this analytical properties. Now the heat transfer coefficient has also been calculated for this wall, thermal resistance thermal mass, the absorbance, the roughness, and all of this. Those are basic information data here. Okay, now if this one is going to be like um, a precast wall, for example, you can now type in other information like the image of this wall. If you have an image I want to send to the factory of this wall, you can now add your image. That is addition of other information to your materials or to the element that's the wall itself. Okay, if I add some few notes, that's the note here just be W A E X T W A dash E X T one. That's that like notes here. Now the model, that's the type. You can just say if it's a factory produced wall, and just type the model of the wall, the manufacturer, that's the factory that's producing it. Then the type, that's exterior wall. Then URL that leads to let's say website that has that. So you can add those information here, give more description about the world. Okay, so you can just have um for this year we have block one. And let's use it like two to five and then block one. Lead. 25 I mean cement and sand mortar mix 
Okay, so just that's all for that. Then can give an assembly code as let's say 001. Then the type mark, the fire rating, and all of that. And just include then the cost information. Okay, so the cost parameter score of this one, let's say 6,500 naira. So we added the cost information there. So the IFC parameters also make sure it's default. Export to IFC default. Guide that appears on you. Then so once you're exporting to IFC, all of this information that you added to this wall stays with this wall material. Okay. So you can add that is building information rich model. Now the door also is not just the height and the width. You've got to edit type also. There are so many information there. The function of the wall, like I said, is an interior wall. It's on the host that is on the wall. That's the host. Okay. Then the material also that was used for the finish of that wall. The thickness of the frame. This is frame thickness. This thickness you see here is called the frame thickness. Then the height of the wall. The trim, that's the exterior trim and interior trim, 25. That's one, one inch each. Then the width of the trim is 76 mm. The width of the door itself. Now, when we talk about analytical properties, those are the features that most of these analytical properties, when we do a kind of an um, building analytical model study or an environmental study on the building, it fills up, populates all of this information. That's the light, light required, the heat coefficient, and all of that will be calculated here automatically for the um, analysis sustainability engineer also. Now, also identity data, I've got to cost information. Let's say this day is 90,000 error. Add door. Let's add that here. So that's the cost information here. You can also add other information you want to add about this model. So I find information which model, all of this space, it is literally filled or always filled up. So you have as much information as you need about your model. So it's not just the 3D design alone, all the bit of information has been filled in. That's another point where the BI manager comes in to fill every information. So yeah, the BI manager has to be very fast, just like the project manager. Because is you go to site. He is on site before you go. His mind has already been on site. He has brought everybody together, designed to the smallest detail. The URL for where, where we can purchase the dog is there. So all of this is called an information-rich model. So it's not just designing alone. As I said, we have the graphical and non-graphical data. So we add all the non-graphical data. That's a, those are the text and all of that inside here. Okay. So by the time we get to the um, for 5D analysis proper, you would see how to go about the um, 5D aspect from this kind of information rich model. Okay. So that will be all. Mr. Moderator? Yes, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, okay um, so we have some questions. Um, QS Hassan Abbas said, please, why do we take different sections? I don't see what you use them for. He's asking why you take, you create different sections while you were um, doing your sectioning. He doesn't know what you use them for. Okay, Roderick Okeke also said, sent the question and said, you need to do a recap. <clears throat> Uh, for Sir Roderick, uh, the recap will be the video that will be shared uh, after this program. Now we have one from uh, Rebecca. Rebecca Omololu, he says, please, how do I save my work after I am done with the design? I'm sure you demonstrated it. Maybe she was not on. So for her sake and other persons who mixed up at, you can also show how to save uh once again we have some another one from uh demola or he says please we need shortcuts for all the revits and if there is any documentation that can help us with upgrading our knowledge let it be shared and this, his appeal also reminded me of several appeals that are also available 
on the WhatsApp platform for this program. They are asking for um, manuals, written documents that can guide them in the process, not only the video that will be shared. So, sir, I don't know if you can help us address that one. If there are documents that you know, written documents that you can use also. And please, before you, before you wrap up for the day, would like you to also take us to your your linking page we understand you have a linking page as well as your youtube page where you have most of your materials so that anyone you cannot be able to give to us now in the course of this training we can be able to assess it also from some of your your location your your, your website pages then we have another one from okechuku victoria and kiru she said <clears throat> Thank you so much. For now, I don't have any question, but my question will actually come when I start to practice it and encounter a challenge. That simply means that your explanation was quite uh, very good. And then we have another contribution from Joshua or Joy says, please, how soon can we get the recordings? Because trainings like this can better be understood via constant practice. As the institute is make, doing her best to uh, keep up uh, increasing the knowledge base of our members, uh, as the case demands, we'll still arrange for a training like this. Say, so please, is there a place on Revit that the client brief is saved? Um, I don't know if you can attend to these questions when the time comes. And let me take this one for the last one so that you can look at other things before. I know time is fast spent. When you place the door, did the wall automatically remove? Somebody is wondering what happened to the wall that was there before you brought the wall, before you brought the door, what exactly happened? The Ibukun Badejo said, we will need this video on time so that we can use it to practice to enable us submit the assignment. And again, I remember somebody was asking a question on where to submit the assignment the email address to submit the assignment. So you can as well, when you're making your final presentation regarding your website and your LinkedIn and your YouTube page, maybe you can offer them an email address where they can send in the assignments, which you will evaluate. Okay, uh, Ibukule says, um, okay, Adegoke said, he has three questions. One, how do we write specifications for a particular floor plan? Two, who, whose email are we sending the practice video to? And three, how can we inscribe on the plan? Then the last, there we have another one too from David Inyong, which seems to be the last one. If the materials for the class is shared among QS, I think it will help us to go a long way in learning the software. So, uh, uh, QS Kazim, if you can take it up, some of the ones that are questions, you can attend to them. The ones that are demonstrations, you can also help us with that before you wrap up uh, your presentation. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, thank you very much for that, Mr. Mojito. Um, firstly, the first question we have there is, uh, why do we take different sections? The reason we took different sections because in during normal design, principle of design and all of that, when you are preparing your documentation, you have the two sections view. That is the section one, yeah, which is the section one and the section two. Okay, those are the two cuts of your building, just to give more information about what the building covers. So you have the door I and um, the window ITA, the door eyes and all of that. So you can always add some more detailing by using the dimension tool here. So once you click the dimension tool, you can just this is the um putting thickness. The building part is this, then the oversight is this here. Can you see that? So if you have a situation like where this is looking very small, just change the scale of this to one to fifty. You see down here we have one to hundred into one to 50. They can now adjust this here. So one is 155 and the other one is 150. That is for this year. 
Now also you can also add information about the um, base of this um, windows to the height. Can you see this? So those are the other information you can create from the section. You can get your ceiling heights also. Those are information that are not shown on the floor plan. So you can get that on your section. So you have the um, vertical and horizontal section. That is why we have two sections here. Okay. And next one, how do you save your work? All you have to do is just press Control S, save. Okay. So let me just, I'm not saving this file currently, but for you to save, you press the Control S to so save. Now, okay, let me quickly call out, bring our attention. Remember, this work is being shared locally when we create. The, well, we're explaining collaboration and all of that. So that is like the central access for this work. Now you see we have this here, work chain monitor, which I tried to open the other time. And let me adjust this here. And then it collaborates. You see this um, edit request, then the work chain monitor here. Now the work chain monitor is this. So you see the central access file, which is the file we're working with. Editing requests and notification. You see, you are seeing, you're going to see all of this here. Hmm? And we have different settings also. Like, I always make adjustments, keep work sharing window on top of other application. Then, central access file, when it took synchronize, can always adjust all of these edit your requests. So, whatever request for edit, you can always grant or deny the request. The notification, you can get notification on your system or and just make sure this switch turned on. Okay. So this is how the work sharing monitor looks like. So for that, you can just press Control S to save. I also explained yesterday when we started the session by coming to files, then click on save and you save your work immediately. Okay. Um, shortcuts. I don't advise beginners to work with shortcuts. There's no shortcut to success. Work, learn how to do it know how to use every of these tools up here okay so if you know what you need at part i got to give you was what you need at different time for a simple basic design there's still way advanced knowledge on this which are one of the things that are covered at the academy for digital learning we have courses on very way detailed explanation of designs mechanical electrical and all of that but for this is just the basic knowledge you can cover the entire features, but for the basic knowledge, follow the process, okay? Follow the process that you've been given during the course of this program. I would advise as a beginner to like shortcuts or get used to shortcuts. You learn shortcuts over time. Like now, for example, on that architecture, you over your mouse around this, you see you have wall here, then you have a bracket there. Now that bracket, WA, is the shortcut for wall, WA. Door also has a shortcut DR, window WN. Can you see all of the shortcuts are written there, but you yourself have to use it to see the shortcut the next time you're going to make use of it. So there is no shortcut. I don't advise for you to get used to um, shortcuts. If you had any challenge in the process of practicing what has been taught within this course program, you can always reach out via the WhatsApp group or through the ADLM admin WhatsApp and the ADLM email, which is admin at adlmstudios.net. That's our email address, admin at adlmstudios.net or via WhatsApp on my WhatsApp number. That's ADLM Studios uh, contact number that is on the WhatsApp group. So you can always reach out via those two, okay? Then the recordings will be provided by the institute. Also, um, client brief is a written document. You can add that into the, it is the client brief that you use to create the design. It is what the client said that the design team or design professional used to create his design. Do you understand? So when you create, once your client gives you his brief, it is usually written down. It is not the client brief that it translates to your 2D actual design. I hope you understand. Okay. Um, when the when the doors are placed, like 
the software, it's an automatic software that knows that when you put doors in a particular space, it removes the walls that are there because the doors are embedded into the wall. So it cuts it off. It's an automatic cut. It's not something that you have to do manually. It's not AutoCAD that you have to start shipping up and all of that. Once you put the door on the wall space, it cuts them off immediately. So when you're calculating for your bigger quantities for your entire wall area, it has removed all of the openings for you. But as you, based on anywhere you have openings there, it's removing that for you. Okay. Um, specification sheets, that's, those are um, details of what your video is about. If you check, what I explained earlier was about the wall. Once you click on the wall, edit type, yeah? So you put all your details, that's specification details, all the identity data, our specifications. So you can always add that. For every element you'll be creating, you can always add the specifications also within the element data there, okay? Then, Description of by explain text. If we're following at the beginning of this session, ground floor plan here, yeah, I explain the text so on that annotate here, yeah, and I explain this text. All you just do is click on it and drop it. All of these I explained at the beginning. They are all things that are functional. I've literally given everything you need during the first run through. It's now left for you to go through the videos and practice. So for this year, bedroom, just type in bed. Yeah, it's kitchen. Just put the kitchen. Then click on the next point, bedroom. And the next point, yeah, living room. Okay. Then the lobby is also over here. Yeah. Then we have the toilet, which is WC. So that's how you add text. Once you are done, close. Then escape. So that's how you add simple text to your design, as easy as that. So that's just the basics. This is the basics. Yeah. And for reading, for the sake of reading also, um, it is advisable you go to the documentation part of the Autodesk software. Once you're inside the software, all you just have to do is press F1. Once you press F1, it takes you here. This is the documentation. Okay, so you have, you have all the notes you want to read. What is in Revit, release notes, mechanical architecture, analyze the design. This is the notes. You can read as much as you want to read. You can read that here. Or... You check out our YouTube channel or you take architectural design course or PIM courses that explains in details all of this. You can take all those advanced courses that will help you, many of which are available at the Academy for Digital Learning, ADLM. Now, you can always take those courses to learn more or read through all of these release notes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is the, once you press F1, it brings you to this page here. Yeah? Now on this page here, you see what is in Revit. This is like the biggest textbook for Revit you can ever get if you need the textbook. But it's not just about reading through, it's about getting someone to guide you through, like a mentor to help you out. That is one of the reasons ADLM is there. You don't just watch, but you learn and you ask questions and you learn and ask questions. Okay, it's not just reading theory. BIM is not a theoretical course. So you don't expect to depend on books or material. It is not theory, it is practical. For practical related courses, you need the videos to guide you through. Do you understand? For practical related courses, there is need for you to use videos to guide you on how to go about it. There are not some things that you write on paper, scribble on paper, and you would grab everything like that. If you want to read the biggest textbook for Revit, is inside the Revit website. This is a website that has taken over 30 years to build. So if you want to read MEP, you see, you have so many things. I just keep opening and keep opening and keep reading and keep reading and all of that. Okay. So that's like the biggest textbook you can ever think of. So if you want to make your learning curve very long, 
So you can always go here. Also, we have um, the AJLM YouTube channel. I would advise you go down to YouTube, subscribe to this channel. Currently, we have over 40 videos there, and more videos are still coming up in these coming days. Now, we have videos on Revit, on quantity surveying softwares, how to carry out quantity takeoff and all of that on this channel. So you see, we have videos on Revit here. That is for Revit, basic designs, and we can go through that. Then we have our overviews on our trainings. We have how to use plants to basics of plant swift for quantity takeoff excavation, cost X, plant swift versus cost X. So we have various information that can guide you through the basic usage, not just not advanced, but just the basic usage. Okay. So all of that are available on the YouTube channel. So you can just open up YouTube on your phone, type in ADLM Studios dash PIM trainer. Once you type in things you hear and just you have to, all you have to do is just subscribe and turn on the notification. Once you subscribe and turn on the notification, you get all of the updates from our YouTube channel. Also, we have a LinkedIn page where you can always connect with us also at Cosim Adidalapo. Uh, this is Cosim Adidalapo. This is my LinkedIn page also. And you can check out the ADLM Studios page also right here. So you can always um, follow me on LinkedIn also to get other information about me there. So we have LinkedIn page here and we have ADLM Studios page also. Yeah. So the ADLM Studios page is where you can see, get updates on our upcoming training, our upcoming programs and all of that. So all of that are all here for you. Okay, so this is our LinkedIn page, the YouTube page. And you can also reach out to me on WhatsApp also. Okay. And for those that does not have the software installed, please, um, try and reach out to the moderator and also watch the videos of this course. Once you get to watch the videos, you would see at the initial stage where you, um, where we are, where the moderator actually put everyone through on how to install the software and all of that. If you have any question after that, you can always reach out to me on my WhatsApp also for any other information you might need. Okay, so that will be all. Okay. All right, thank you mm. very much, Dola, for this has well. been greetings from the silence. I'm sure if we had made this very open, we'd have been hearing a lot of thank you, thank you, thank you, ringing in the air, because we cannot um, quantify or we cannot cost the impact, the knowledge impact that you've given us. So I'd like to say thank you very much. Yes, apparently I was on mute. I had no idea. So once again, thank you very much, Dollar for This has been very, very interesting, I must say. And if if we were on, or if we had everybody unmuted, you'd have been hearing a remarkable resonance of thank you, thank you, thank you going on in the air. If we were to pay you for this, we definitely would not be able to pay you enough because the knowledge you've impacted on us is not quantifiable and cannot be costed anywhere. So once again, I'd like to say thank you for this opportunity that you've given to us to learn and take our interest in Revit. We will definitely be taking on this challenge and speaking for the group. I'm also to challenge and we will be reaching out as well. So thank you once again. And to the attendees, I hope we've all learned a thing or two or definitely more than a thing or two. And we'll be seeing you on our next class. Apologies for those that didn't. Therapy 9, the best way to connect to class and have zero challenges is to use um, a computer. Connecting with your phone may not give you the required attendance or the required participation that you'd be expecting. So best next time, connect with your phone so that you would have maximum participation and you can ask all the questions and practice live as the class is ongoing. So um, the WhatsApp panel is there. If you have any questions or concerns, drop your messages there, and we will definitely take it off. Um, you can still pay for those that are yet to or have to ask questions. You can still pay 
but you will not be able to get seating points for the meeting or the class that has just ended. But so this session or this program is ongoing for November, so hey, there's a lot more to learn. So if you have friends that are asking, let them reach out and you know, we're everywhere available to assist in any way that we can. Once again, thank you very much. Um, if we do not, do we have any more comments from the um, my team? Yeah, uh, if no? I have to put this in um, for announcements, um, the next uh, training will be uh, scheduled, and I wish from now till maybe a day before that day, let us resolve every installation issues and challenges. I am accessible and available from now till that time. So we have the free time from now till that time to resolve every installation and downloading problem. That you know that has this. Oh, please, do you have this um, 2022 software? Can you install it for me? It's the same thing. It's a software. It's anywhere you can get it. As long as it's the same software, you can use it. So don't just wait for us. We were only trying to make it easy for everybody so that at least you would have something to practice with while the class is ongoing. But honest is on all of us to get the softwares for ourselves so we can practice further. And like, I remember, he, I recall he also said, the habit, attending this class is not the end. If you do not practice, I promise you, if you do not practice this, what we've learned today, if you don't practice it today, tomorrow, come Monday, you would have forgotten 80% of what has been said this weekend between yesterday and today. So this is something that you have to practice and practice and keep practicing so that it stays. And for you to do that, it's best to just get the permanent version or not a trial version. The trial version, we're only making available so you can have something to practice with. So if I were you, and I would take my own advice, go and try and get the the versions for your own self the ones that you can use continuously and it will not give you troubles regardless the trial versions that we've provided are still available so try and get those sorted out downloaded on your systems before the next class so we would not have issues or trying to attend to issues on downloads and all because even us too we're also learning and like me my notes my my jotter now is is very packed while he was training i was also working on my system and i was also taking notes so um, if we do not have any announcements, I'd like to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and see you in the next class. Bye for now.